We spend a lot of time talking about how to make repetition fun for our kids. But what about the parents? What if you are just sick of hearing Twinkle for another time? Today, I'm going to give you the Parent's Guide to Surviving Repetitions. This is Adventures in Suzuki Parenting. Hi, my name is Jody St. Clair and I teach both violin and Suzuki early childhood in Eugene, Oregon. Don't forget to hit like or subscribe if you find this information really useful. And I would love to hear if you have any additional tips in the comments below. Today I'm going to be giving you four tips for surviving repetition. The first one is that it is not about the piece. So I hear a lot of twinkle, but because every child brings a little bit different perspective, a little bit different twinkle, I'm focused on what that child is bringing in to the lesson that day. Now you're not getting the variation of different children like I am, because you're working with your child. Children, you're gonna be focusing on the progress made instead of the piece itself. So instead of making it about twinkle or Vivaldier minor or whatever that piece is that's just maybe taking a little bit longer, focus on the skills that are being developed. Watching the advancement in these skills is really going to be what helps keep you motivated to do a lot of repetitions and the more excited you are about those repetitions, the more excited your child's going to be. The second tip that I have for you with surviving repetition is the power of observation. This is probably one of our greatest tools and actually I'm going to be going in depth with this in the note by note course in November. So if you're really excited about trying to hone your observation tools and just get better at knowing when things are working and when they're not and what to do, that would be a great place to kind of dive in a deep way there's just a few more days for you to sign up for that course, and I've got the link below. So your observation tools are really your powerhouse uh, when you're practicing, but it, it's going to apply to a lot of areas in your child's life. This is all about figuring out what is working and what motivates your child. Every child is a little bit different, and you really know your child your, the best, and so you're going to have the best observation tools in order to figure out where to direct your practice. When I'm observing at this deep level, again, it's not about the piece anymore. It's just about what I'm observing, what I'm seeing, what I think I should celebrate, and what I think we need to work on. The third tip that I have for you on surviving repetition is to create variation. So, we do this a lot in the early childhood classes because we do the same pieces through the whole course, but we create a lot of variation in order to make it interesting and to give children a new level, a new skill with something they already know. You have probably seen your teacher do this um, a lot in the lesson, and I think especially in group class, I use this even more because it gives us a way to participate to examine the piece differently. Um, and it's a very, it can be a very playful tool. So the obvious ones are the twinkle variations. That actually has variations built into it. But I, if you get a little further down the book, you're probably using twinkle to learn some new skills and creating new variations. Or you could create your own variations by changing up the rhythm, changing the starting point, or changing the mood. I can make those repetitions more interesting by saying, huh, I wonder what Twinkle would sound like if we tried to play it really sad. Or right now we're very close to Halloween, so I might say, let's try and play a spooky Twinkle. What would that sound like? And that variation is not only going to keep you more engaged, but it'll keep your child more engaged as well. My fourth tip is don't be afraid 
to be playful. So this is kind of a extension on the variation idea of don't be afraid to add play into your practice. Even if you haven't seen your teacher do it before, I, some of my best teaching techniques and the things that have really connected with so many families, I got because a parent tried it out first. And then they showed it to me and I got to learn something new as well. So don't be afraid to get away from the script and try something new. Maybe your child really loves to dress up. Use that in your practice. Maybe your child really loves to play games. Use that in your practice. Maybe your child is really active and really likes to move their bodies. How can you incorporate that into your practice? There's really nothing that is off the table. Look at, use your power of observation and see how you can bring some play into your practice. And I am sure that that doing something over and over will no longer be an issue for anybody. Thank you for joining me today. Happy practicing.